With all the new $1,000 smartphones these days, we sometimes forget that there's a great selection of affordable devices as well. A good mid-range smartphone will cost you $500 or sometimes just a little bit more. But what do you get when you only have $200 to spend on a new smartphone? The new Moto G Fast from Motorola costs $199, making it the perfect smartphone to help us answer this question. But before we do that, I'd like to thank King Mobile, the sponsor of this video. If you're looking to switch service providers to save a little bit of money, Ting Mobile is a great option you should consider. Ting delivers nationwide 4G LTE coverage using three different networks on Verizon, T-Mobile, and Sprint at an incredibly low price since you get to pick and choose the services that you actually need rather than paying a blanket fee for unlimited services that you'll likely never use. If you use less, you pay less. It's just that simple. Switch over to Ting Mobile now and you can even get a $25 credit on your bill. Head on over to fandroid.ting.com for more details or check out the link in the description below. The Moto G Fast is one of three new G series smartphones from Motorola this year. The G Power comes with a massive 5000 mAh battery while the G Stylus has, as you guessed it, a stylus. While the G Fast is simply the bare bones versions of both of these devices with no added frills. That being said, the phone still has a lot to offer. From a design perspective, the G Fast is pretty impressive. The phone's 6.4 inch display dominates the front of the phone with thin bezels and a hole punch cutout for its front facing camera. Since this is a budget device, there's no in-display fingerprint sensor, but you do get a capacitive one on the back of the phone highlighted by Motorola's Batwing logo. It's positioned perfectly, allowing you to unlock the phone quickly with your index finger while holding the phone in your hand. The device only comes in one color, but the textured pearl white plastic makes the phone feel like it's a $400 device. The color and the texture also do a pretty good job of hiding the fingerprints that you typically have accumulated on the back of the phone when it's a much darker finish. Rather than opting for an extra large camera module on the back of the device, Motorola split up the three different camera sensors into two different modules with a single sensor right up top. While this is a subtle design choice, it allows the Moto G Fast to stand out from all other devices these days that seem to have extra large camera modules just plastered on the back of the phone. Since this is a budget device, you only get a single mono speaker for audio playback, but you do get a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and a micro SD card slot, which are two features that you typically don't get on much more expensive devices. Overall, the phone is big and heavy, but it's still quite comfortable to use, especially since the rear mounted fingerprint sensor can be used to pull down the notification shade, keeping your finger gymnastics to a minimum. And since we are talking about a budget device again, an official IP dust and water resistance rating is out of the question. But Moto did include a water repellent nano coating, so you won't have to worry if you get caught in the rain or accidentally spill a drink on the device. Of course, the main reason for the phone's large footprint is its 6.4 inch display. While the size may draw some comparisons to high-end devices, the resolution and the display technology certainly don't. To keep costs down, Motorola has opted for a 720p IPS LCD panel. Color accuracy is commendable, but viewing angles aren't the best and individual pixels are definitely viewable on a display of this size. The screen will also be a little bit dim even at max brightness when using it in direct sunlight. As you can probably imagine, the Moto G Fast isn't quite as fast as the name implies. The phone is powered by a Snapdragon 665 processor from Qualcomm with 3GB of RAM. That being said, you could do a lot worse at this price point. To put performance into context, the Moto G Fast could go head to head with a flagship smartphone from 2015, and it even has the same 32GB of storage as other 2015 flagship smartphones had. Put all that together and you get a decent device that can handle all of your favorite apps and play a decent number of games as well. But it will be noticeably slower than all mid-range devices from this year and even last year. Surprisingly though, the chipset can handle some graphic intensive games. Performance isn't gonna be stellar, but you can play games like Asphalt 9 and even Space Marshals, which is one of my new favorites. And the phone can even keep up with Call of Duty Mobile if you tweak the graphic and frame rate settings just a little bit. My only real gripe with performance is that 3GB of RAM isn't quite enough with how big apps and games have gotten these days on Android. Jumping between apps is slow and tedious, and if you happen to answer a call or a text message while playing a game, the phone will usually have to kill the game completely and force you to reload it from scratch. Looking at the back of the Moto G Fast, you might be deceived into thinking that Motorola blessed the phone with some decent cameras. 
While you do get a triple camera setup with a 16 megapixel main camera, 8 megapixel ultra wide, and 2 megapixel macro camera, the results leave a lot to be desired. My favorite of the three is the ultra wide camera, simply because it's rare to see one on a phone at this price point. The images captured turn out pretty decent if lighting conditions are just right. And you also get a 118 degree angle lens, which is actually a little bit wider than what you get on most ultra wide cameras these days. But since it is a fixed focus lens, you do often get soft pictures if the subject is a little bit too close to the phone. The 16 megapixel main camera can take decent shots if you have really good lighting conditions, but in low light, it's not that great, especially because there's no optical image stabilization. So you'll need to make sure you have a super steady hand. Motorola didn't even bother with a dedicated night shot mode for the camera either. So you have to rely on the flash to capture usable images at night. There's also the two megapixel macro camera, which can capture some interesting shots, but I honestly wish they would have skipped it altogether and used the cache to upgrade the other sensors on the phone. And then there's the eight megapixel front facing camera that's peeking through the hole punch cutout in the display. As you can imagine, performance here isn't stellar by any means and low light pictures rarely turn out unless you're fully committed to using the display flash for every single shot. Now, Motorola's devices aren't known for their flair, but the company's meticulous attention to detail on the software front is what really sets them apart from most other Chinese brands. The Moto G Fast runs on Android 10 with Motorola's typical software additions that the company's been perfecting over the years. If you're not familiar with Motorola's build of Android, it's pretty much close to stock with not a whole lot of visual complexity. On top of that, you get the classic Moto gestures, which allow you to open the camera app by twisting the phone, turn on the flashlight with a double karate chop, or turn on Do Not Disturb by placing the phone face down on a table. And even though Motorola is committed to simplicity in its software, this year they've added customization options as well for the styling of the phone, allowing you to change the font, color options, and even icon shapes, similar to what you get on Google's Pixel devices. One of my favorite features of mid-range and budget devices is that you often get superb battery life when compared to flagship smartphones. With the 4,000 milliamp hour battery inside the Moto G Fast, this phone definitely doesn't disappoint. Due to the slower chipset powering the phone and the low resolution display, the G Fast will last you at least a day and a half on a single charge. And on a few occasions, I was able to stretch things out to nearly two full days before getting back onto a charger nearly 40 hours later. But of course, there is a downside here since you don't get wireless charging and the 4,000 milliamp hour cell inside this phone only charges at 10 watts over USB-C, meaning you'll have to wait right around two hours for this thing to fully charge. As you'd expect, a $200 smartphone isn't going to blow you away, but the Moto G Fast, even though it doesn't really live up to its name, is a stellar budget phone that should be at the top of anyone's list who's looking for something that simply gets the job done. It's certainly not perfect, especially when compared to $400 and $500 mid-range smartphones, but it's definitely a lot better than the majority of other devices selling for $200. Thank you so much for watching, and again, a special thanks to Ting Mobile, the sponsor for this video. If you're looking for fast and reliable service at a rate that you can actually afford, head on over to fandroid.ting.com and build a plan that's perfect for you, or check out the link in the description below. Thank you guys again, and I'll catch you in the next one.